Savitri, pages 501 and 502. And Savitri mingling in that glorious crowd, yearning to spiritual light they bore, longed once to hasten like them to save God's world. But she reined back the high passion in her heart. She knew that first she must discover her soul. Only who save themselves can others save. In contrary sense, she faced life's riddling truth. They carrying the light to suffering men, hurried with eager feet to the outer world. Her eyes were turned towards the eternal source. Outstretching her hands to stay the throng, she cried, O oh, happy company of luminous gods, revealed who know the road that I must tread, for surely that bright quarter is your home, to find the birthplace of the occult fire and the deep mansion of my secret soul. One answered, pointing to a silence dim on a remote extremity of sleep in some far background of the inner world. O oh, Savitri, from thy hidden soul we come. We are the messengers, the occult gods, who help men's drab and heavy ignorant lives to wake to beauty and the wonder of things, touching them with glory and divinity. In evil we light the deathless flame of good and hold the torch of knowledge on ignorant roads. We are thy will and all men's will towards life. O human copy and disguise of God, who seekest the deity, thou keepest hid and livest by the truth thou hast not known. Follow the world's winding highway to its source. There in the silence few have ever reached. Thou shalt see the fire burning and the bare stone and the deep cavern of thy secret soul. Then Savitri, following the great winding road, came where it dindled into a narrow path, trod only by rare wounded pilgrim feet. A few bright forms emerged from unknown depths and looked at her with calm, immortal eyes. There was no sound to break the brooding hush. One felt the silent nearness of the soul. End of Canto 3, Book 7